Hey guys! Today we're making the Horcrux locket from Harry Potter completely from scratch using simple muggle materials and a bit of magic. So here's what you will need. And let's get started! So the movie version is a silver octagonal locket with faceted glass. But I decided to just use the descriptions in the books as a guideline. As you can see, you have a lot of creative freedom here. So I recommend drawing some sketches. Let's start with the inside of the locket, which can hold pictures and secret messages. First, salvage some thin cardboard from a cereal box or something similar. Cut off the thinnest strip you can make and use glue to form a long oval ring. Add more paper to the ring and then cut some strips that are about 1 or 2 mm wider and add them to the outside. When you place that on something flat, there should be a gap on the inside. Glue the ring to another piece of cardboard and cut it out. Now you can test if you can slip in a piece of paper. Nice! Next repeat after me. Geminio! If you can't perform the doubling charm yet, you will just have to use your hands. Now we can make the hinge. You'll need a thicker and a thinner wire, ideally in gold. Cut off a piece of the thick wire and straighten it out. Then cut off a longer piece of the thin wire. Wrap the thin one around the thick one in a coil. Then drop it <laughs> and leave a gap before you make a second coil. And a third one. Next get a new piece of thin wire and make two coils in between the other ones. Squish them all together and bend the thick wire to keep the coils in place. You should end up with something like this. Position the hinge where you want it and bend the wires into place. Then cut off any wires that stick out. Make sure to leave a gap between the cardboard and the hinge. Now get a glue gun out and place a good amount of glue on the wire. Don't touch the wire because it gets very hot. <laughs> I learned from experience. Press the glue down with baking paper and a coaster with a wookie on it. <coughs> this ensures that the locket doesn't get too bulky. Repeat the process on the other side. Test the hinge and reinforce the wires that come from the hinge with hot glue. Now we got a sturdy hinge structure. To give the locket a closure, I'm cutting two strips of foam and I'm gluing them to the side of the locket. Only add glue to the ends of the strips. And it wouldn't be hot glue without the glue strings that get everywhere. <laughs> now I'm making a U-shape from wire that will go in between these foam strips. Bend the wire over. Trim it. Glue it. and press it. You can also add more glue here. Then add another U-shape made from wire so you can add a chain later on. And after a few wax from the wiki, the main structure is done. 
Next, I made a template from thin plastic so I know how big I want the locket to be. And I used air dry clay to shape the locket. I learned that it's better to add too much clay than adding too little because we will sand the clay anyways when it's dry. The sculpting takes some time because it's a bit tricky to shape both sides of the locket at once. The plastic template is really helpful as a guideline for making the inside flat and for preventing the two halves from sticking to each other. And with a toothpick you can work on the hinge area. When you've had enough of sculpting, make sure that there's still a gap in the picture frame. In hindsight, I should have just slipped something inside to keep the gap open. Then let the locket dry. Uh, would you mind cleaning my hands quick? Thank you! When the locket was dry, it didn't close so well anymore, but that's something we can fix with sanding. I'm using a file to make the outside smoother and the inside flatter. I recommend using a face mask, like this one, so you don't have to worry about breathing in all the dust. For touching up really small areas, you can use a map tuck. And we got a basic locket that works. Now to the jewels! I found these rhinestones in a nice variety of sizes. I arranged them on the locket and marked their position with a pencil. You can even use an eraser on the clay. Now you can sketch out the engravings on your locket. Any kinds of swirly shapes look antique to me. My theory is, the more details your locket has, the easier it gets to make the locket look like metal. I chose the painful path of scratching the design with a map tag. Is it finicky? Yes. But I tried many things and this just gives you the sharpest and finest results. For filling out larger areas, it's better to use an empty pen. It's nicer to hold as well. Brushing off the dust helps to see how far you've come. You can also use a colored pencil so you can see the scratched lines a bit better. Since I wanted to make my life really hard, I added these tiny rooms from the movie's design on the inside. But I think it was worth it. When you're happy with your engravings, it's time for my favorite part painting the locket. I'm using black acrylic paint first. This time I slipped some cardboard pieces into the picture frame and only took them out when the frame was dry. Let that dry and we can create an antique metal effect next. I'm mixing golden acrylic paint with water to make it really smooth and then I'm removing most of the paint from the brush so I can dry brush the locket. This is where the locket is really starting to shine. I love this part. It's hard to stop, but we don't want to cover up all of the black areas. Of course, you can always go back with black paint if you think you've added too much gold. I'm quite happy with that. Now we can glue on the rhinestones. Instead of super glue, I'm just using clear nail polish here. I think it's more forgiving and it works surprisingly well. A toothpick is definitely your friend in this step. Yay, now all that's left to do is to attach the locket to a necklace chain. And you can enjoy wearing the famous locket without worrying about the negative side effects of dark magic. Later that same evening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.